Hi everyone, it is me, Michelle. Let's jump right into this, guys. Health officials warn that disease X, disease X, a term coined by the World Health Organization, our favorite people, could spark a global ec epidemic due to climate and lifestyle changes. While not a specific disease, it represents the high likelihood of an emergent pathogen as exemplified by what happened in 2020. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't say the actual words here on YouTube. The Earth's rising temperatures, partly due to human-caused pollution, may make 2023 the hottest year on record, creating conditions for extreme weather and increasing the risk of disease transmission from animals to humans, including pathogens released by melting ice caps and those carried by mosquitoes and ticks. Warmer waters foster algal blooms and heat-resistant viruses could pose new threats. The societal impact of pandemics like <laughs> cough, cough, with significant deaths and long-term illnesses underscores the urgency of this issue. A study indicates that 58% of known infectious diseases are aggravated by climate change. To combat these threats, increased funding for scientific research and actions to reduce climate change are essential. Individual efforts uh, such as adopting plant-based diets, recycling, using renewable energy, and avoiding fossil fuel vehicles can contribute to mitigating human-caused global warming. Let me just go ahead and say crock of baloney, if you will. Now, do I believe that hotter temperatures can increase the risk of certain things? Sure, but so can colder temperatures can also increase the risk of certain things. You can't get by or past what's going to happen. I mean, it is what it is, but it feels like with every single headline that comes out these days, where it is, whether it's um, the, uh, what do we call it, CWD, the... Uh, Oh, come on, brain. Zombie, zombie deer, the zombie thing going around, and then mad cow, and then avian flu, and then whatever else. It's all designed to basically keep us in a scared state, if you will, and to really push this climate change. I mean, everything lately feels like it's about meeting somebody's agenda. Not yours, not mine, theirs. Who is they? Everybody who runs this world that is not you and me, basically how I feel about that. The, the push for um, electric vehicles, the push for solar panels, the push for wind turbines, the push for um, basically staying home a lot of the times and not going anywhere because flying planes is a lot of jet fuel and it's bad for the air and you know driving your car and sitting in traffic to go to work is bad because of exhaust fumes so just quit your job or work remotely or whatever. It feels like every single thing is at this point designed to panic us, cause fear, make us worry about things. It's like, bro, come on. We only have so much time on this earth. We cannot let every single thing scare us. Am I still going to bring you everything that's out there like so that you have an idea of what they're talking about, of what is going on? Of course, because I'd rather have the knowledge than not have the knowledge. But you have to do what you will with that knowledge. You either let it scare you or you let it prepare you. It's one, of the, it's one or the other. I personally do not feel that bringing you information is a is in order to scare you it is in order to inform you i would much rather be informed about everything going on than again have my head in the sand or the wool over my eyes or whatever phrase you want to put in there it's better to know what's happening than not i just read this thing yesterday day before yesterday now they're trying to say keep your dogs at home don't send them to dog parks and don't board them for the holidays and here's why, because now they're saying that dogs are having some respiratory illness where if your dog starts <coughs> coughing, basically, and seems lethargic, you should take them to the vet because they might die. What the actual, like, are you serious right now? So to me, them putting that out there, talking about, I think a lot of it was happening in Oregon. There was uh, issues with some dogs who got sick and they, the vets couldn't figure out what it was. So now they're saying it's some sort of respiratory thing. Um, and to be careful because it, it's fatal, whatever else, right? But then they're saying on the, on the same, on, in the same breath, don't board your dogs, don't take them out to the park, basically stay at home with them. And it feels again like one of those subliminal scare tactics to keep you from traveling over the holidays, which would hurt the economy, which causes depression in people when they can't get out and about to see friends and family, which then makes it so that they have a society that's just easier to control. And that may sound far-fetched to some of you guys, but that's how my brain works. I'm a very optimistically cynical person, which is a really ironic conundrum, if you will, right there, because I like to be positive and happy and see the best in things, but I'm also not stupid and I'm very cynical and I can see the worst in things as well. And I can see the push, the angles, the whatever else. And I, I try to combat it with positivity or silver lining, or this is what they're saying or what they're trying to make you do, but here's how we get around it. 
that's my goal on a daily basis to figure out how to get around the crap that they are pushing at us. And again, bringing you guys this information to me is one way to get around it because the more people who understand and are informed of what is going on, the more people that can stand up, fight back, basically take control. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. So, uh, by the way, welcome back to Squirrel Tribe. Thank you for those of you who are here, who are returning. If it's your first time, hey, welcome. I hope you enjoy what's, what's happening here. If not, no harm, no foul. If you guys like the video, contemplate maybe possibly hitting that like button. It does help me in the algorithm. And if you really, really like this stuff, maybe think about subscribing. If not, again, new favorite phrase, no harm, no foul. It's okay. Now, <clears throat> good old President Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, Grandpa Joe, whatever you want to call him, Mr. Biden, who just turned 81, mm -hmm, uh, continues to face scrutiny over his age as the 2024 presidential race heats up. He holds the distinction. See, I like the word distinction because it makes it sound good, right? Like distinction sounds like a high, high end kind of thing. He holds the distinction of being the oldest serving U.S. president and would be 82 at the start of the second term, finishing at 86. That doesn't sound like a good distinction to me. That sounds like, bro, you're a little too old for this. Like we, we need fresh blood in there, like younger, fresher, understands what's going on, can walk upstairs, doesn't sniff babies, you know, that kind of thing. Um, former President Donald Trump at 77 is also under observation for his age, though Biden has faced more criticism despite both having had noticeable missteps. <laughs> I, anyway, on the campaign trail. Well, one of them because, you know, the fighting and whatever, and then the other one because they don't know how to walk. But that's not the point. The White House, through Press Secretary Karina Jean-Pierre, defends Biden's capability by pointing to his legislative achievements and foreign policy management, attributing them to his experience. However, public opinion reflects ongoing concerns about his age, and probably a whole lot more than just his age, if we're being completely honest here. A recent ABC News slash Washington Post survey indicated that 74% of Americans think Biden is too old for another term, a sentiment shared by 50% about Trump. In New Hampshire, a key primary state, 56% of likely Democratic voters expressed age as their primary concern regarding Biden. Regarding Biden. You know why? Because in the survey, I doubt they said, do you think he's an idiot? They probably didn't say that. So you had to pick age. That was probably like the closest to it. But anyway, um, Biden often jokes about his age in public appearances, demonstrating a lighthearted <laughs> or senile approach to the issue. But the topic of age and politics extends beyond Biden with incidents involving other senior politicians like Mitch McConnell and the late Dianne Feinstein fueling debate on the appropriateness of age for public office. Experts like Professor S.J. Olshansky argue that determining an upper age limit for political service is challenging because you don't want to be hit with that good old ageism. You know what I'm saying? Does ageism exist? Hell yeah. Should it exist in Congress and things like that? Probably. Everywhere else? No, I feel like that's wrong. But in Congress and in places like you don't want also in like police work, firefighters, you don't want an 86 year old firefighter who you're, you're hoping can throw you over their shoulder and carry you out of a burning house. I'm sure there's some really, really well in shape 86 year old people out there. But I don't think they should be firefighters or police officers and I don't think they should be running the country. But that's just me and we can agree to disagree or we can fully agree. Either way, whatever works for you guys. Um, as Biden reflects on his 81st birthday, I'm trying to remember, probably, whatever, marked by a family gathering in Nantucket with coconut cake. I couldn't have eaten there. I would have died. Coconut night. We don't get along. Questions about age and leadership continue to be a significant aspect of the political discourse, influenced by the aging demographics of current U.S. political leaders. Now, again, been inserting my opinion here the whole time I'm reading my notes. Um, here's another opinion I'm going to insert, if you will. No, no gross pun joke intended there. But he knows he's old. He knows that the American people don't really have much faith in him. And I don't think he thinks he's going to win in 2024, but he does seem to be a little like out there. So anything's possible. I don't know that people want, even despite the age thing, I don't know that people want another four years of what we're currently going through. Now, of course, you will have people out there that say, well, the four years we're in now is because of the four years before him. Everything that happens during this presidency is caused by the presidency before and so on and so forth, right? But even I don't think that, and I've always actually kind of sort of thought that way. I've always thought that presidents and people in power inherit whatever the person before them did. And then it's up to them towards the end of whatever to get it fixed and get it rolling and, and whatnot. But I feel like this, this one here, 
No, I feel like came in, inherited some problems, obviously, <laughs> you know, all that stuff, but then just decided to just light this shit on fire and make it as worse as like humanly possible. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. So that's again, just me. I'm real opinionated today in case you couldn't tell. Uh, okay. So here we go. Governor Westmore of Maryland has signed an executive order establishing a state of preparedness to improve the state's responsiveness to emergencies before they occur, as opposed to waiting until it happens, right? This preemptive measure allows the governor to declare a heightened risk of disruption without a full state of emergency, ensuring swift action and resource allocation for potential hazards. The Department of Emergency Management is tasked with coordinating state government preparations, aiming for proactive protection and early coordination. Smart move, in my opinion, there. Additionally, in response to Tropical Storm Ophelia, Governor Moore has declared a state of emergency to mobilize resources and support for Maryland's residents and local jurisdictions. The state of emergency enables the Maryland Department of Emergency Management to activate emergency plans and request aid through the Emergency Management Assistance Compact. Residents are urged to stay informed and follow local guidance and emergency protocols. The state activation level has been raised and will be adjusted as the situation with Tropical Storm Ophelia develops. Now, in regard to an ongoing state of emergency, President Joseph R. Biden Jr. has approved an emergency declaration for the U.S. Virgin Islands due to hazardous levels of lead and copper detected in the water supply starting from October 25th of 2023. Uh, really quick, did they ever fix the water in Flint, Michigan? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's been going on for like, what, a decade, actually longer, but we've been talking about it for probably a decade where the residents there still have to worry about lead in their water. Hmm. Okay. This allows FEMA to coordinate disaster relief efforts to ease the suffering of the local population on St. Croix by providing necessary assistance for emergency measures under the Stafford Act. The assistance includes emergency protective measures such as the provision of water, filters, testing, and technical support for a period of 90 days from the incident's commencement. Um, Ms. Lei Soon Yi has been designated to oversee the federal recovery operations in the impacted areas. Okay, I'm good that they're overseeing like issues there that's that's a plus still curious about like other parts of the entire country that are having massive issues too that aren't being overseen if you will now let's see if i'm going to just completely butcher this name cheng ping zhao sure ceo of binance holdings ltd has agreed to plead guilty to charges of anti-money laundering and will pay a 50 million dollar fine this is part of a comprehensive agreement with the U.S. Justice Department to keep the company operational. As a condition of the settlement, Zhao, Zhou, Z-H-A-O, I don't know how to say it, Zhao, will step down from his position. Binance itself will plead guilty to criminal charges and pay a $4.3 billion, capital B, my dudes, billion dollar fine, concluding a years-long government investigation. Years-long government investigation, yet they want this to still stay in working order, stay in, you know what, okay. The charges, which were unveiled in a Washington state federal court, include money laundering violations. I wonder if it was going to Ukraine. <laughs> what are the odds? The operation of an unlicensed money transmitting business and sanctions violations. The settlement is one of the largest penalties within the cryptocurrency industry and comes amid broader regulatory scrutiny. The cryptocurrency BNB associated with Binance fell by 5% upon the news. Further details of the settlement will be disclosed by the U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in a press conference. Nothing is safe. Your money in the bank ain't safe. Your bitcoins aren't safe. Your cryptocurrency isn't safe. Like your credit cards aren't safe. Like where is there anybody doing business involving some sort of monetary whatever that aren't doing shady skeezy things like our government <laughs> the banks everybody is just shady as i'll get out when it comes to finances like that's just how it seems now i appreciate you all very much for being here with me today what day is it oh i think it's hump day is it wednesday it is hump day my dudes hi happy hump day so squirrel tribe um again if you would like to support the channel a uh, smidge more, up to you. There is a link to the Patreon in the description. It's free, there's paid tiers, whatever. Also, there is buy me a coffee. I know a lot of you have asked if I have like cash app and stuff. No, I don't do all that. We're not doing all that. But if you wanna buy me a coffee, which is technically buy me a mimosa, there is that option. I love reading the notes that you guys leave over there with uh, your, I don't wanna call it donations. That sounds like a weird word. With your support, haha, -ha. we'll go with support because I like that much better. Donation just sounds wonky i don't like that word um 
I love reading the comments that you guys leave over there. So thank you for those of you who have done that so far. Um, I guess that's it for today, guys. So I love you all immensely, Squirrel Tribe. I hope you're having a fabulous Wednesday, my dudes. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I hope you all have plans that make your heart happy. If not, I hope you find some way to have a happy heart tomorrow. Uh, look for, I, I say it all the time, but look for the silver lining. Try to look into something positive. And if, if, you're, if you're having trouble, talk to me. I'm here, Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee area, um, Instagram. Just talk to me and I will try to help you out as much as I possibly can because I just want everybody to enjoy the time that they have here on this planet. So I love you guys very much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.